On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, Russian tankers go stealth. I'm your host, Sal McCoglan, and welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. If you're new to the channel and haven't done so yet, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos when they come out. So, with the Ukraine-Russia war now over a month old, we've seen a lot of news about Russian tankers and Russian oil. And the real question is, what is behind those stories? Because if you read the stories from the mainstream media, you get the impression that Russian oil is blacklisted, it's sanctioned, and it's not allowed to go into any port. At the same time, there are numerous reports about Russian ships engaging their cloaking devices and going completely stealth. So let's go ahead and find out the stories behind these. So lots of stories hitting the mainstream media about what is specifically going on with Russian tankers. This story, for example, from the New York Times, a tanker's giant U-turn reveals strains in the market for Russian oil. The ship, originally sailing to Philadelphia, apparently lost its buyer in the middle of the Atlantic, and a number of tankers are carrying Russian oil face similar problems. Yeah, we're seeing that. We're seeing that the stigma of Russian oil is going to force buyers of Russian oil to divest themselves of those cargoes and those tankers carrying that Russian oil are seeking new areas to go. Uh, we see this story here. This is an NBC story. It's a red flag. Russian oil tankers are going dark to evade sanctions. This is a little recap right here. Russian oil tankers are increasingly going dark or shutting off their transponders and automatic identification systems, AIS, in order to evade U.S.-led sanctions. Oil cargo is switching uh, hands from Russian sources to companies and countries silently in order to avoid the global signs of being associated with Russia as it continues to attack Ukraine. India has already bought more Russian crude since February than it had in the full previous year. So you get this from CNBC that Russian tankers are turning off their AIS transponders. Uh, you get the same story from CNN. Russian oil tankers are vanishing off the map. Well, let's break this down and talk about what's really happening with this. So this is a map of the Black Sea. This is marine traffic. Our buddies at marine traffic are always great. We, we love everything about marine traffic. They do a great job in tracking everything across the board. We know the Black Sea has been pretty much the northern part denuded of commercial shipping. Uh, you have over here in the uh, Gulf of Odessa a blockade with Russian vessels that are just preventing Ukrainian vessels or any other vessels going in and out with vessels, foreign flag, stuck in Ukrainian ports. Over here in the Sea of Azov, we saw that uh, Mariupol is under continual attack. And in the, the port of Brzezansk, we saw the attack on the Russian Alligator-class cargo ship that resulted in its sinkings. But the other thing to notice in here, and I think it's really important that we, we kind of comprehend this, is traffic is still flowing through the Black Sea. It's coming through the Turkish Straits down here in the lower left and proceeding across the Black Sea up here to the port of Novoresk. Now, we've had reports of mines coming loose. Uh, Russians and Ukrainians are planting mines. Those mines are coming loose. We've had reports of mines in Romania and along the northern shore of Turkey. There was a recent report by Navy News that two Italian minesweepers have been requested by Romania to come help them. But one of the things, if you look here at the port of Novoresk, is you'll notice that it is a fully-fledged operational port with a lot of commerce. All those red dots are tankers, and the green are grain carriers. So Russian oil is still moving out of its ports. It's not like it's been stopped for any reasons. And if you go into the reports, one of the things we begin to see here is how exactly that's being done. So great report earlier last month from Sam Chambers about how Daredevil Aframaxes, Aframaxes are kind of medium size tankers, anywhere from about 80 to 120,000 tons, uh, are still keeping the Russian oil moving. Now, understand, sailing in the Black Sea has resulted in higher insurance rates. Some shippers have decided not to go in there, but others are doing it because why? The payoff. You can get that Russian oil out and sell it. This story right here, a Reuters story, a G-Captain, all at sea, Russian oil tankers seek a port as buyers shun trade deals. This is kind of what we've been hearing, the kind of the narrative. 
that Russian oil is not being sold. Uh, this story also, uh, G Captain on Bloomberg, will Russia tanker fleet come to a halt? The uh, Savcom flot fleet is a big, huge tanker fleet. It's one of the biggest in the world. And a real big question about will it stop sailing? This report also Reuters tanker carrying Russian cargo bound for U.S. sales for North African coast. This is that one that did the U-turn, and now it's going to sell that oil on the North African coast. However, one of the things we're seeing here is the sanctions that have been leveled against Russia by countries in the EU, some, the United States, Canada, Australia, are limited. There are only a few countries that have actually sanctioned Russian oil. For example, Poland who's announced that they're going to divest themselves of all Russian energy, are not stopping the import of Russian oil until the end of the year. So where's, where's this going and what is being done against these Russian tankers? And that's where you get stories like this. This is in The Guardian. Lloyd's moves to cancel insurance coverage of Russian firms hit by sanctions. Let's be clear. Ships do not sail without insurance. The liability is too great to sail without insurance, especially through the Black Sea right now. And so if you lose insurance for a vessel, you basically lose the ability to move it. And one of the things we're seeing is self-sanctioning by corporations, the classification societies, uh, Lloyd's, uh, ABS, the American Bureau of Shipping. A lot of agencies are moving to divest themselves. Here, if Lloyd's removes the insurance coverage for those Russian tankers, that's going to preclude them from moving. This story, also in G-Captain, the Marshall Islands, one of the biggest registries out there, is considering, considering hasn't done it yet, expelling Russian vessels from ship registry. The problem with that is the number of ships that are Russian flagged is not as large as Russian owned. Russian ownership in tankers is everywhere. You can't swing a dead cat without hitting a Russian tank, uh, a, a tanker owner somewhere. There's Russian money everywhere. And this is the one hard part about sanctions. What are you considering sanctioning a Russian vessel? Does it have Russian crew on it? Is it Russian completely owned? Is it partially owned? Is it flagged? Uh, if you kick them out of the Marshall Islands, Liberia is still out there. Panama is still out there. They'll probably take them if they want to because that's the flag state's ideas. This is the story that kicked off that CNN story and all the other ones. Russian tankers going dark raises flags on sanctions evasions. We've seen the Russians start turning off their transponders, their AIS transponders. Again, those little red dots you see sailing around there, those are your AIS transponders. And you can turn them off. Now understand, since 2000, it's been an IMO regulation that vessels have to basically identify themselves via their AIS. That's the rule established by IMO. Nation states have rules themselves. If you're in their territorial waters, you have to have the AIS off. Classification societies, insurance societies require their carriers to have it. But understand, this is a plug. All you gotta do is unplug the thing and, and it turns off. And also understand, there's no punishment if you turn it off. Uh, granted, your insurance company may not insure you. The classification society may have an issue, but no one has really done much about this if you turn your AIS transponder off, it's kind of like ripping your tag off your mattress. The mattress police are not going to come get you. The IMO certainly is not going to come get you. So, you know, turning off an AIS transponder is is perfect. So you see a ship like this that's featured here in the Bloomberg story, and then you pull it up on marine traffic, and you'll see she's right off Vladivostok right now, off the port. She is showing her AIS transponder the last time she hit was, as you'll see here, six minutes ago. So she turned it back on. But what she probably did was dump it off while she was delivering oil uh, to uh, the next cargo. And what that means is for a brief period of time, it wasn't tracked. Now understand AIS is not the only way to track vessels. We have open source intelligence, we have satellites, uh, we have military aircraft tracking them. I mean, it's not just by this. However, this is a unique system because airliners don't turn off their their friend and foe unless they're in combat and even military ships usually will have a, a, an AIS on but not always the collisions back in 2017 with the Fitzgerald and the McCain were a good example where they didn't have them on and that caused some issues about identifying the vessel prior to the collision uh, stories go on here Greenpeace activists block Russian oil transfers at sea so what we're seeing happen too is some of these Russian tankers aren't going into ports, but they're transferring their cargo to other tankers. 
And if you go dark and you come up alongside another tanker, transfer it in, you don't have good visibility of where that fuel is. We've seen this going on with Iranian and Venezuelan tankers for a long time now because of sanctions that have been leveled against them. You had the most recent announcement by the Biden administration that they're going to release 1 million barrels per day from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. This is to replace that oil that was coming from Russia. Understand, we import Russian oil not because we need oil imported in the United States. We basically produce the same amount of oil we consume, a little less actually. We're, we're down in our production right now. The issue here is refineries. Hadn't built a new refinery since 1977. That means a lot of the oil that we're producing now, fracking oil, for example, can't be used in our refineries, or you need to move the oil from where it's at to another site in the United States to go to that refinery. We're literally shipping oil out of the United States overseas and then bringing it back refined to sell in the United States because we don't have the refinery capacity to do it. No new oil refineries since 1977. Now, there's been additions to oil refineries existing, grandfathered in, but not enough. And what we've been getting from Russia is the type of oil that we need. Finally, this story here, we're hearing now that the Russians are having a hard time sourcing fuel for their vessels. And this is going to be critical. If they can't get fuel oil, diesel fuel oil for their vessels, there's reports of a Russian naval unit moving from the Pacific to the Mediterranean, potentially the Black Sea. It's going to need to fuel. And one of the things that the Russians have been pushing for is the sale of their oil getting rubles in return. They want to change the contracts so they're not getting U.S. dollars or foreign currency. They want rubles because they're having a hard time converting that foreign currency to rubles, and they need rubles a lot. But this story right here is a good indication of what's happening. But the best synopsis of this that I've seen comes from this site right here. And this is uh, a site, uh, tankertrackers.com. And I just want to read from a tweet that was posted by them the other day. And I, I think it's important because it covers a lot of the issues that we're talking about here. So some basic facts to know reg regarding Russian crude oil exports. And again, this is from the experts at tankertrackers.com. First, there aren't any sanctions on Russian oil exports. An import ban by the U.S. does not equate to, to oil sanctions. And I think that's correct. I think if we keep looking at this and thinking about the fact that, that okay, we, we've sanctioned oil and therefore it's not moving is not exactly true. We have prevented the import of oil in the United States and other countries have done it, but not whole scale. There's not oil sanctions against Russia. Second, Russia is still exporting 3 million barrels per day by sea, and it's happening transparently. Just showed you the port of Novoresk. Tankers are moving. There's, there's no issue there with the movement of tankers. Nothing is stopping them from moving. Uh, point number three, only a minority of departures during March haven't announced a proper destination yet. Uh, tanker trackers follows every tanker, uh, and they do weekly uh, reports and audits on where these tankers are going. And as they announced here, there's only a handful as of March that haven't announced where they're going. Fourth, the U.S. is still importing oil. I know we think there's, an, uh, there's a sanction against it. It's not true. Uh, it, it doesn't go into effect till April 22nd because... Russian oil that had been booked and sold and already prearranged to movement is being grandfathered in. So we're not even sanctioning U.S. Oil, uh, Russian oil until April 22nd. And finally, we haven't seen any wholesale evasive tactics to hide these, export, these exports. Wholesale. There's been some minor issues here with basically the uh, Russians turning off their AIS temporarily, but nothing on the scale that we've seen, for example, with the Iranians and the Venezuelans. Now, that may change. We may see Russian uh, tankers go completely dark and start moving. But as of right now, the concept of Russian tankers going stealth is sounds interesting. It sounds great, but it's not as factual as being reported. I know we're shocked about this from the news. But again, it's because there's more detail to it. So I hope you enjoyed the story. I hope you enjoyed the episode. All those sites I listed, stories, will be in the show uh, notes. Uh, the paragraph following it, the, the, the details will be in there. If you enjoyed the channel and you enjoyed the story, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel. 
hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos. When they come out, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, share it across social media, and if you can, join our Patreon page so that you can support the channel and we can bring you more stories like this. So until our next episode, this is Sal, signing off.